Welcome back. The University of Michigan recognized some of the greatest football players in its program's history this weekend, right before kickoff against the Buckeyes. While these men made a considerable impact on the field, perhaps none had a bigger impact off of it than Julius Franks Jr., the university's first black All-American, was a pioneer for change. Fox 17 Sam Landstra spoke to his son and has the family story. This is the Auburn Hills neighborhood located in northeast Grand Rapids and in the 60s it was significantly white. But then in 1962 four investors bought 20 acres here. One of those men was Julius Franks Jr. And that purchase he made is credited with beginning the racial integration of Grand Rapids. This is the national team. Half these teams are from Alabama, Texas. A room full of Michigan football history in Fred Frank's house. That's the ticket right there. This, this was the largest attended game in history, any football game ever. Decades of memories and memorabilia from dad's playing days and a lifetime of watching the Wolverines. After we talked for a while, he goes, what team did you play for? He thought I was a basketball player. I said, no, no, I'm not a basketball player. My dad was Julius Franks. Uh, he, Julius Franks from the 40s, oh yeah, man. oh baby, you know, I'm, I'm, I used to hate the way he talked, but now I love him. Born in 1922, the All-American football player was raised in Hamtramck, a predominantly Polish community. And they loved their football, and they didn't care what color this guy was. He had a big head, a big neck, and he was quick. You know, he, he could talk the slang with them and everything else, with white guys. Franks played his way to the University of Michigan, where he starred on the famed Seven Oak post offensive line, winning All-American honors in 1942. One of the best guards in the country, one of the best pulling guards in that era. The only place on earth in 1942 where a black man and a white man could be on the same field together was college football in the Northeast. But tuberculosis cut a playing career short, sidelining Franks in the hospital for two years. Still weak from the disease, he started dental school and leaned on his connections to start a life of activism. Jerry Ford was a senior when my dad was a freshman. They treated him all right, matter of fact. After moving to Grand Rapids, Franks became a leader in the Urban League, United Way, and American Red Cross. He didn't have to use protest. Protest brings attention and cameras. My dad felt that his end is who he knew. He played football with a man that is rising up the political ladder. He moves to a town where his buddy is the mayor. And he figured how most effectively can, can I give back and to serve the community? Now, Fred lives in the house that dad bought, in the neighborhood that dad helped desegregate. My dad, uh, he went door to door getting people to, uh, to vote for Obama. And then Obama got elected. And then uh, he decided to rest. Franks died in 2008 and is remembered as one of the first American athlete activists. Sports is a microcosm of life. I, I, I would challenge the researchers of this country or of this city to find me an earlier African-American athlete who became a civil rights leader. Uh, yes, he, he, he was right place, right time, good guidance, but he, he uh, boy, how honorable. In the Auburn Hills neighborhood, Sam Lanstra, Fox 17 News. Franks is forever remembered in the University of Michigan Hall of Honor, and the Auburn Hills neighborhood still stands as a symbol of equality in Grand Rapids.